In lesson four, we're going to talk about how to filter data and change the names of some things just to uh, clean up all of the data. We're going to use the same data set that we used before. And now let's go into R and open up that file. Lesson four, filtering and cleaning up data. So we're going to start by reading in the same data set that we read in in the first video, as well as the last one we did in lesson three. And we also want to take a look at what the plot looks like. So in lesson three, we identified a few different issues that we wanted to fix. We wanted to remove the CHR prefix from the chromosome names. We want to order the chromosomes correctly. And we also wanted to pick a subset of the types and rename those. So let's take a look at the chromosomes first. So when you do the summary function, notice how the chromosomes are ordered the same way that they are on the x-axis down here. I'll zoom in so you can see that. So it starts with 1, 10, 11, 12, and that's the same order that they have in the summary function. So that's important to note. And we also have the types, and there's a lot of those that we might want to um, get down to a fewer number, to a smaller number. So let's first remove the CHR prefix. So in order to do that, we use this little statement here, which has a few different things in it. First of all, we have our actual column of data here, which is a factor. So when you're working in R with these columns, some of them can be factors and some can be strings. A factor, when you summarize, it looks like this, right? So it, it actually has each of these different possibilities as something called a level. So I'll write that down here. Levels equals the possibilities for a factor, like the different categories. That's good. Yeah, so levels are like the possibilities or the categories. And then we have a number of rows in each of those categories. So what we can do is use this g sub function, which substitutes any chr into nothing. So it takes this string and replaces it with this string in our data. We can also replace it with something else, but first I'll show you what this looks like. So if we just run that, then we get a bunch of ones instead of a bunch of uh, chr1, like that. So that's just if we run that part. Um, if we were to try to do the summary of that, it acts kind of funny because it thinks that they're characters or they are strings, basically. Whereas we need this factor in order to tell it that I want it to be a factor, something that has categories and not just a bunch of random words. They're in categories. So now we have the categories again, and that's what we wanted. So we use g sub to replace chr with nothing. And then we use factor to turn all of that inside of it, inside of the parentheses here in factor, turns that into a factor instead of just characters. And so when we run this line, we then assign all of this a factor of uh, chromosome names where the CHR prefix is gone into my data column chrome. So if I run that, we can then see the result by running summary, and we're good. All the CHR prefixes are now gone. And if we plot again, we can now see that the CHR prefix is gone from all of these labels at the bottom now. Awesome. The next thing we want to do is reorder the chromosomes so they're numeric. Instead of 1, 10, 11, we want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then at the end, X and Y, possibly. In order to do this, we use this statement down here. So I'm just going to unpack that a little bit for you. What we want to do here is say, I want a factor of my data, Chrome, which is now a bunch of 1s, 2s, 3s, etc. 
And I want the levels. Remember we said that the levels up here were the possibilities or categories for that column? So I want to change what the possibilities are, and that automatically says that this is the order I want them in. What seek does here, if we run this, you can see what it does. It gives us essentially a list, or an R, it's called a vector technically, a vector of numbers from 1 up to and including 22. So that's what we want there in order to capture some of the chromosomes. And we also have an X and a Y. So what we can do is use this C, which makes vectors essentially. So it makes like a list where the first elements are the 1 up to 22 part, and then there's also an X and a Y. And so when we get all that together, we have this list, 1, 2, 3, 5, all the way up to 22, X and Y. So it basically just sticks this list of 22 numbers together with the X and Y into one list together. So you don't have to run this part, that's just to show you what's going on here with this. So the part here is what we make the levels into. So now that's telling it that this is the ordering that I want my chromosomes to be in. So we have my data chrome is now a factor again of what it was before, but with new levels that is a list of 1 up to 22 and then x and y. So when I run this, if I now do the summary, now they are in order and that's great. And then Notice how the plot changes. So right now we're still at 1, 10, 11, 12. If I run the plot again now after doing that fix, now the chromosome labels are in order. So awesome. Yay. We've worked out the chromosomes. So now that looks perfect. Now let's also do something about the types. And it's not that I have anything against Chrome HMM, but I do want to show you how you can take out some of these categories and do some filtering and so on. So this is a good opportunity to show you that. So here we're taking a subset of my data. So this is a little bit interesting to see. So we have the my data type. So this is one of our columns again. And we have all these different uh, categories in it, all these different levels in the factor. For each of these, we're going to check whether it is in this list. So remember the C makes like a list of things. So here we're making a list of the one active promoter, four strong enhancer, and eight insulator types. So what this returns when you have the column and you check whether each element is in it, it's going to give you a list of trues and falses for whether whatever we have in this, in that row of the column, whether it's in the list or not. And so whenever there's a true here, that means that that condition was satisfied, that the type in that position is in this list. And so all these trues and falses determines which elements we're now selecting from the data. So when you select from the data, you have this uh, square brackets right here, and you have two different things. It's row and then comma column. And here there's nothing in the columns and that means that we automatically select all the columns and we don't necessarily want to throw any of those away. So yeah, it's row comma column and the row is determined by all these true and false values. So whenever it's true, we're going to include that row and we're selecting all of the columns here after the comma. All right. So if we run all of this, I'll just place my cursor anywhere and command enter as always. We run that part. And now let's um, let's do the summary. That's the right way to look at this. My data and then type. So we'll run that. And so now if you see, these have been changed, so now there are these three categories that still have something in them, but the others are now gone, which is great. 
And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these and rename them as well. Because now that we have these weird numbers, we have like number 1, 4, and 8, so that's kind of odd. It's best if we rename them to just promoter, enhancer, and insulator. Like, let's say that's what you want to do and you want to rename these. So I'll show you how to do that. There's this library that is really helpful for having a revalue function and a few other things that can come in handy. And so let's just load this library. It's just a little helper thing. So command enter on that. And then we have a little change that we're trying to make here. We use the revalue function. The first thing we give it is the column of data that we have, our types here which are now only three different types, the other ones are gone. So we only have insulator, promoter, and enhancer left. And then this shows how to recast those types, like how to change them. So it's basically a list that has a bunch of these statements. I want this thing to become this. So one active promoter equals promoter. That's the first change we want to make. Then we put a comma. Then the next change we want to make, strong enhancer becomes enhancer, and then eight insulator becomes insulator. So you just separate these different ones by commas and make a list of all of them put together, right? Just like that. So it just shows how you're going to convert one thing into another. And so the revalue function does that for you on this column that you give it. So let's run this line by going command enter. And another thing thing we can do again is to just take a look at the summary of that data and now we've renamed these types so we have promoter, enhancer, insulator great and if you want you can also reset the levels and then the other ones will go away but if we just plot now it is only going to show us the types that we have members of so these other zeros like the weak transcription factor or something, or a repressed, a weak promoter, weak enhancer, those aren't going to be in there. We just have the types that there are actually rows that still contain that type. And so we have this nice plot. So the chromosomes are in order, the CHR prefixes are gone, we've limited our types down to just three different categories, and we have renamed those types so that it's a little prettier and easier to read. And that's it for the filtering and cleaning up the data. And next we're going to look at um, a lot of different ways that we can tweak the plots to make them look exactly the way we want. Like if we wanted to make the labels here bigger or change what the labels are like chrome and count, we might want to at least capitalize them or say chromosome or something like that. So that's in the next video. And that's it for filtering and cleaning up data.